What's the word, y'all? Welcome back, man. Clay Day, in my opinion, was everything I could have expected and more, man. I think him, his teammates, the social media team bodied everything with this comeback, and I'm so very, very excited to talk about that and all things basketball. Somebody sent this shirt to my P.O. box like a year and a half, two years ago, and I had never put it on. But with it being Clay Day, the first thing I did when I woke up this morning other than shower and do my hygiene stuff was find this shirt because this was Clay's day, man. So I went to Home Depot today. Um, it was one degree in Chicago, so I had my coat on, but I had it unzipped, right? And I'm in Home Depot. I'm buying boxes. Oh, I, I bought a new house. So we've been in this room for like two and a half, three years. Um, in the next month, I will be somewhere else, which is exciting. Yeah, it's a, it's a good moment. But I'm buying boxes from Home Depot, and we're getting checked out, and the guy at the register checking us out sees my shirt, and he says, he's coming back today. Who knew that Home Depot had hoop heads in there? I might show up again tomorrow to see what bro wants, see if, if he wants to have a conversation about Clay Day. You feel me? Home Depot, with the good customer service, seeing what I was doing and relating to me. You know? Yeah, he did come back today, and it was great, man. It was great. Um, bro came out guns blazing, which is great. I knew for sure that the first play that they ran was going to be for Klay Thompson. I thought they was going to throw some pin down, some some something to get him an open three. Nope, the man went right to the basket, got an easy bucket, and I was so excited. And, and, and there's a poll on Twitter yesterday when it was official that he was coming back today asking who the most likable player in the NBA is. And majority of people voted for Klay Thompson. Now, that could be just because he is coming back today. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do believe that Klay Thompson is the most likable player, one of the most likable players in the entire NBA. And that is saying something, considering there is a three-year span where everybody in the league hated his team. Everybody hated KD. Everybody hated Steph Curry. Klay Thompson? They was like, hey, he's cool. <laughs> they hated Draymond Green. Clay Thompson, he's cool. And I think a lot of that has to do with him just being such a likable dude, right? Uh, even in the 941 days, which is wild, by the way, 941 days since we last saw him play basketball other than today. Um, in his 941 days, he's found a way to still entertain us, whether it be his boat rides to the practice facility or just, just a bunch of different stuff. Like, he his a meme. Like, even right now, he's wearing that, that big old hairband because it's a meme. You know what I'm saying? And like, I always think about the pictures of him with his head out the window in Mexico. I think about the picture of the All-Star game where everybody's facing one direction and Klay Thompson just standing in the other direction. He's such a likable dude. And I think that everybody that is in tune with NBA fandom really, really enjoyed this. I mean, not everybody, because there was a tweet, a couple tweets that crossed the timeline. Um, somebody had a thread of every Klay Thompson mistake. I got to remind y'all to enjoy basketball again. I'm going to remind you every episode. Legitimately, somebody watch this game. And instead of enjoying the good game that it was, well, was it a good game? I don't know. Instead of enjoying the game that it was, somebody's like, yeah, every time Klay Thompson missed a three, I'm going to tweet. Brick three. I'm going to do this. And somebody else talked about Klay Thompson's return from his injury tonight. Uh, you'll guess he's the first person to ever do it. He's arguably had the easiest career for a star player. Media gives him zero blame. Just a bunch of, like, shut up. Enjoy basketball. Who cares? Who cares? Imagine watching this man have to sit out for almost a 1,000 days of the thing that he loves the most in the world and come back and say, his career has been super easy. Nobody, nobody gives him any blame. Bro, shut up and watch basketball. Enjoy that thing. And me and the homies watched this game together virtually, and we just had a conversation about, how much you must love something to to be forced to be away from it from 941 days and how that moment, the moment gave me goosebumps, by the way, when they did the introduction of all the players and Clay Thompson's very the very last one and he's sitting on the bench. And it gave me goosebumps a, a, a thousand miles away. So I couldn't imagine being in the rain. I couldn't imagine his feeling to finally be back on the floor. Like I couldn't imagine someone telling me, hey, Kenny. You cannot make another YouTube video for 941 days. I would go insane. And not just because it's my job. It's just it's something that I've been doing since I was 14 years old. I'm 25 now. It's all I really know. So to have it taken away and then eventually given back to you has to be the most satisfying moment. And I just know that he doesn't take basketball or anything that he has achieved for granted. You know? Um, and he gave us a show, right? He knew it was Clay Day. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to take every open look I get. I'm going to take that thing. He ended up hitting like three threes. He caught a body. The man had, what, an ACL injury and an Achilles injury? Like, that is wild he caught a body out there. Um, so it was just an overall great day. Um, the lead up to it, whether it be Draymond's Twitter and Instagram or Steph Curry or just the Warriors in general, they I think they did an amazing job getting the fans hyped about this. And I know, again, it's Klay Thompson who's super like it. It's been such a long time. But a lot of organizations don't do something like this. Um, 
um, Rui Hachimura came back today, and I found out 30 minutes before tip-off that he was coming back. I know it's a lot different, but I'm just saying, and when somebody's coming back from an injury, it, it's not this big of a uh, festivity. Kyrie just came back from whatever he was dealing with against the Pacers. And, yeah, a majority of NBA fans that are in tune wanted to watch that game, but it wasn't as big spectacle. And maybe that's because he can't play at home. <laughs> maybe Barclays Center would have done something super crazy. Um, but they, they can't because obvious reasons. But it's just cool to see uh, Klay Thompson back on the court. It's cool to see Steph Curry get out of that slump because Steph Curry had been a guy that's been, like, top three in MVP voting the entire season. But over the last X amount of weeks or, yeah, it have been weeks at this point, he has been in a slump, this crazy, historically bad slump for Steph Curry. Um, and he, I check the MVP tracker on B, uh, basketball reference kind of often. I don't agree with it all the time, but I think it's just super interesting to see how the numbers try to do it. Because it's, it's not like a person on basketball reference is doing that. It's like them incorporating advanced stats and all of that. Uh, Steph Curry had been a guy that was like one, two, three the entire season. But the last time I checked, he was all the way down to like eight. And that has a lot to do with him being in that slump. Today, he was hitting some wild shots. He ended up with 28, five and five. And it's unfortunate, though. I wanted this game to be better. Um, the Cavaliers... Um, I've mentioned before, one of my favorite teams to watch this season, and I know they don't, they don't get a lot of, um, nasty televised games, so some people who might not be so in tune with the, uh, the Cavaliers see this game and be like, Kenny, this is, this is the team that you enjoy watching? Yeah, it was just a bad day. And maybe, maybe this is about to be a turn low-key, um, for the Cavaliers, um, because right now... In the last 10, they're four and six. They went on a nice little streak. And now that Ricky Rubio's out, Kyle Sexton is out, these are guys who's playing such big minutes and such big roles for them. And though Rondo wasn't bad today as a replacement, it just feels like they're getting thinner and thinner by the day. And because of that, they were sitting at like the four seed for a good portion of the season. And now they're at the eight seed with like one game difference between that or the six seed with a one game difference between that and the eight seed. So still still have a lot of hope for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but not a great, not the greatest performance for them as a whole. Let's talk about some of these other games. I want to go quickly down to the Lakers versus Grizzly. It was the last game of the day. And um, well, this was um very, very interesting. The Lakers were on like a four game once you're going into this. And I looked at that four-game win screen, and I was like, it's always important to win games, obviously. But they weren't really going against high-level competition. And the Memphis Grizzlies, who I want to focus more on the Grizzlies than the Lakers lost, by the way, but I, will, I do want to say this. Um, they ran into a very good team, and they struggled mightily. There was a period of time, and I know that the final box score says Horton Tucker had 13, and Austin Reeves had 16, and Wayne Ellington had 16. When LeBron James checked out of this game, finally, in the fourth quarter, the only person other than LeBron to have double digits was was uh, Horton Tucker. He had 11 at that point. So don't let this fake comeback fool you to think that this game was closer than what it was or that LeBron had any help today because he literally did not. The man had 35 points, 7 assists, 9 rebounds, and at one point in the third quarter, nobody had 10 points. Again, you're going against a good team. It's a little bit different than beating up on like the Kinks. Or beating up on one of the work, the bad teams. They have to figure out a way to win against good teams. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Let's talk about the Grizzlies, though, because that's why I'm going to shine my light, because they have been um, a surprise for this season. Now, I know a lot of people heavily criticize the trade with Jonas Valanciunas and Steven Adams, and I am part of that group. I mean, I didn't heavily criticize it, but in my mind, it didn't make a lot of sense, because I think we can all agree that Valanciunas is the better player of the two. But this allowed the progression of some of the other people. And I, I wasn't really thinking big brain when I saw that trade. I saw that Steven Adams in his last stint with the Pelicans, he looked like a shell of his former self. And he's been a lot better. I know he didn't play today, but he's been a lot better as far as an anchor to the defense, a team that at one point in the season was literally the worst defense in the league by far. And the last two weeks have been one of the top five defenses. We're going we gonna to get back to that. Um, uh, The Steven Adams trade didn't make a lot of sense in the moment, but now I understand it when it comes to the team building, how it allows more shots for Desmond Bain, who they saw as a dude that after his first season was good and they weren't even running plays for him he was just hitting spot up shots and then he got to summer league and they were letting him dribble the ball and do this stuff they're like hey we don't need Grayson Allen we don't have we don't want to pay him we don't need Jonas Valanciunas who was like second in shot attempts or maybe even first in shot attempts last season we don't need those guys let's get more glue guys that can just come in and play the role and Steven Adams he'll go a game without zero with zero shot attempts if you if you really wanted to you know what I'm saying he is getting force feed a little bit from Josh so it doesn't happen often but the trade in itself Looked very questionable, and now that they're sitting at the four seed, currently on a nine-game win streak, you don't give a damn about Jonas Valanciunas, whatever he's doing over there with the Pelicans. He had a good game today, but you don't really care about that. But you, you love to see the progression of the younger dudes. This was a team that the first month, maybe two months of the season, they were dead last in defense. Last season, they were like number seven. They were top seven. And then they came out this year and were bunts. And now if I go to my cleaning the glass... 
In the last, hold on, hold on. In the last um, two weeks, they are seventh in defense, fifth in offense, and they went from a team that was, again, dead last by a, a big margin. And that's saying a lot because you do have, like, the Trailblazers, the Kings in the league. They were dead last um, in the last month or so since they basically do not lose. They went from the worst defense in the entire league to 13th on the season. John Moran is a special kind of player. I've said that before. On my Before the season started, I said he was my pick for most improved player because I thought he was going to go from, like, a guy that might be an all-star conversation to superstar him. I, I might be missing on every other award I predicted. But that one is good. I mean, even if he don't win the award, I predicted the superstar him jump in year three. Whatever. I mean, that wasn't like a crazy mind-blowing thing because Jaws Ja, right? But still, this team has so many pieces that, like, on paper, I would if I went to a hundred people on the street that claim that they're basketball fans and say, What team does Xavier Tillman play for? What team is DeAnthony Melton, John Conchar, or even a Zaire Williams, who's been really okay, has ups and downs as a rookie. If I ask them, what team do those players play for? A majority of them will not get it right. They've been able to do all of this. They had the 8-2 and two streak when John Morant was out. And since he has been back, other than that first game when the fan got, uh, got in his feelings, they have been incredible. And they just beat the Lakers, and John Morant didn't have to do anything. This was a low management game from John Morant, legitimately. He didn't have to do anything. Because Desmond Bain found himself open a lot this game. Jaron Jackson Jr. starting at the five showed really, really good glimpses in that. And I know he's been playing some small ball five here and there, but they've always kept a traditional five alongside him for the most part because they didn't trust the, the fact that he might get in a lot of foul trouble and, and him being able to body up with the other centers in the league. Now, this is a good matchup because the the, um, the Lakers don't even have a center as LeBron right now, but him ended with six blocks, and one of them was very late in the game where the Lakers are trying to have that fake little push. Um, they've been really, really good. Shout out to John Conchar, the homie. Shout out to uh, Kenny for All-Star, DeAnthony Melton. Didn't have a great game today, but he's a Kenny for All-Star. That was a really fun game, and I'm happy to say that uh, I am watching the Grizzlies more than a lot of teams this season. Like, the way I talk about the Cavaliers is my most, most watched team in the East other than the Bulls. That's how I feel about the Memphis Grizzlies this season. I mean, like, if they are on, it is must-see TV. And it's not just shot. It's like this team thing, and they got it. All right, let's get to some of the other games of the day. The Bulls were on a nine-game win streak, and they lost. Man, I hated that. Um, But... This is why it's very weird for me for fandom purposes because obviously I don't like to see um, Luka Doncic pick apart my team. But as the basketball fan of me, watching Luka Doncic pick apart my team was enjoyable. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to even put in words. But again, I'm team enjoy basketball. And though um, Luka shot eight for 23 and some people tweeted at me talking about oh field goal percentage, that shit did not matter. He was the best player on the court today. I don't care what the percentages say. Um, we saw some of the big glaring issues with the Chicago Bulls in this game, and it had to do with the way we defend the pick and rolls. If we have a, a, a stretch five, if they're willing to hit their shots, which Maxi Kleber did, he's hit six of nine threes, we're going to struggle as our defensive scheme. If you have a center that is a rim roller high flyer, we're going to struggle. And today, we saw a lot of that. It was Dwight Powell on uh, lobs, and it was Maxi Kleber on the pop. And we also let Josh Green drop 18. was not a great game for the Chicago Bulls. And a lot of that, again, our defense wasn't amazing. Vucevic had one of his stinkers, um, one of his worst games since like the first month of the season. Um, Zach Levine and DeMar did not have great games. Those things happen. We are a nine-game win streak. I'm not looking too much into it. Um, next game we do want to talk about, first of all, I know it's the weekend NBA. Stop giving me games that start at noon. I'm not watching. I, I would I would have loved to watch the full game of Nets versus Spurs. I saw it was close in the last couple minutes. I tuned in for that in overtime. But, like, Josh Primo hit the shot, hit a shot, and then Cam Johnson or Cam Thomas hit a shot. I don't have anything to say about that game other than that. Stop starting games that early. And that's the reason why I don't get around to watching many Clippers games because that game ended and like an hour later the Clippers are playing. And I feel like every weekend the Clippers are playing at least one game at 2 o'clock Central Time. And I'm, I'm doing other stuff, NBA. I got a life outside of basketball. What are you doing? I did not watch the Wizards beat the Magic, but I did see that Kuzma had a 27-20 game, which is incredible. He's been um, he's been really good. Uh, they were making a joke around the locker room that vaxxed up Beal was different, and I guess vaxxed up Kuz is different too. I'm just kind of assuming that he has the vaccine now because D.C. is also putting in similar things to what New York has where, like, if you don't have the vaccine, but I think it's the 15th of this month, which is in a couple days, um, that you wouldn't be able to participate in home games. And I'm assuming since if Bradley Beal got it, that Kuz and probably has it too and i'm saying he's vaxxed up cools and he's crazy on the glass um next pascal siakam and fred van vliet close out a game against the pelicans 
Pascal Siakam is an all-star. He has all-star talent, obviously. But Pascal Siakam goes through the stretches where he cannot hit threes, right? And I think what unlocks Pascal for him to be an all-star caliber player is when he is hitting his threes. Now, I'm going to quickly go to Pascal Siakam's um, uh, page right here. Pascal Siakam's game log. Sure, that works. Pascal Siakam on the season is only shooting 32% from three. That's basically what his league average or his career average is. But the year that he made the all-star game, he was shooting 36%. And that just elevated his game crazy. And he's shooting six attempts that year. That was a crazy season. But now, he right now, he is currently on a stretch where he looks unstoppable at the fourth position, man. Let's look. Um, For this calendar month, while they are on a six-game win streak, he's averaging 22 on 50% shooting, 50% from the three. That's great. He's rebounding the heck out of the ball. Today, he made some great play making plays Fred Van Vliet pulled from like the logo on on like what third you know it's like a minute left in the game and then with 30 seconds left in the game he was on a fast break that could have led to a layup he said no let me pull out for three and take one of the most ballsy shots of the season all-star Fred Van Vliet is a real thing he was in my all-star battle I completely agree they deserve to be there and the Raptors are turning up a little bit a team that we didn't know what direction they were gonna go in they are currently on a six-game streak they're three games over 500 and we'll see if that continue shout out to them it is still very um weird to watch them when they're at home um because there's nobody oh it's a couple people in the crowd but you can't really tell i think they have a friends and family thing where like you get x amount of tickets if you're playing that game but they're so spread apart that it looks like just an empty arena um cat head 40 i did not watch this game i will go back and watch cats highlights um i did not watch the nuggets game i want to do i want to talk about the kings or is it too depressing how about I talk about Anthony Simons because he's been really, really good since Dame has been out. Um, today he ended up with 31, 6, and 3. They were killing them on a pick and roll. Alex Lynn didn't know what to do. He was dropping on everything, and Anthony Simon is pulling up. He's been he's been not sneaky good. Maybe sneaky good because I, I'm going to assume that a lot of people are watching the Trailblazers right now because they suck and they don't have Dame right now. Um, but another 30-piece game from seven three-pointers. He doesn't miss free throws. His playmaking is a lot more developed than I thought it would be at this point in his career because he was drafted out of IMG. He was like six years old. So he here he is playing very well. And the fact that the Kings lost this game without Lillard, CJ, and Norm Powell is depressing. They just need to blow it up, do whatever you got to do, dog. There's not a lot of fight. And De'Aaron Fox had had a couple, like, good individual games. But for the most part, team is super disappointed for a team that I have. You know, De'Aaron Fox, again, one of my favorite players. Um, Reese is the homie. Chemezi Matsu is a guy I really mess with. There are a lot of players. Oh, and... Davion Mitchell is the homie. There are a lot of players on this team that I'm invested in, but I can't get invested in a team because it just doesn't work together. That's why I just want players to get freed up so they can spread their wings and get the best version of themselves because the collective, this ain't great, man. I even saw some Kings, uh, Kings fans tweet at me. I swear to you, Kings fans tweet at me saying, Kenny, this is the worst Kings basketball I've ever experienced. Dog, they ain't made the playoffs in 16-ish years. And they're saying this season, even though the record might not say it, it's not the worst record they've ever experienced. But maybe it's the vibes. 16 and 26. Maybe it's the vibes, y'all. F- currently on a four game win- losing streak. And again, a team without Dame, CJ, and Norm, that's a game that you win. Out right, if you're the Kings. I don't know, man. All right, let me know what you think about these games. All things, all things, uh, Clay Thompson's comeback, everything basketball related. I'm looking at comic sections as I always do. I'm remind y'all again to enjoy basketball.